to see. We're also learning about the tornadoes themselves. Yeah, we have Dr. Kelsey Ellis with the University of Tennessee Department of Geography. She specializes in applied meteorology and climatology. She studied a whole lot of storms. Um, Dr. Ellis, let's talk about the storm uh, that hit Middle Tennessee, rolled through East Tennessee. It was in the middle of the night. Um, what have you learned about this storm? What's caught your eye? Um, I think what catches my eye is that it's not as unique as we would hope. Um, I've been studying nocturnal tornadoes, so tornadoes that happen at night in Tennessee for five years now. Um, I've been studying the climatology of them as well as public perceptions. Um, and we have actually the largest proportion of tornadoes that happen at night compared to any other state. Almost half of our tornadoes wow. in Tennessee happen at night. Why well, is that? Do we know? Um, the ingredients that cause tornadoes in the southeast are different than those in like Tornado Alley and allows for them to persist into later day, later hours in the day. And was this we're hearing is it was most likely one tornado cell that just carried on. Is that what you saw as well in this? Yeah, typically you can have one really strong supercell or thunderstorm that's able to drop multiple tornadoes along its path. And we're still waiting to, to learn the strength of all of the tornadoes. We've got some information about those in the Nashville area. Um, what else with this storm? Um, I think one thing that caught my eye is watching some of the stories that you guys were showing from the ground where some people um, survived because they were able to get to their basements. Um, these storms were warned, so there were warnings that were given out to the public, but what happens with nocturnal tornadoes, they're over twice more fatal than a tornado that happens during the day because people aren't likely to get warnings. And so what we're trying to do is make sure those people, like the ones that were able to save themselves by getting a warning and running to their basement, make sure that more people are like that and make sure that they can get warnings at night. Yeah, you, you what about even going to the inner part of, of your house? Is that even possible to make it during this type of storm? Yeah, so the lead time you get between a warning and a tornado varies. Sometimes you get none, sometimes mm -hmm. you get up to 20 minutes. And so it's important that the second you get an alert on your phone or your weather radio, you immediately take shelter in putting enough walls, as many walls as possible between you and the storm, and then you seek more information and try to help others. But you need to get yourself in that shelter first. And it's just unbelievable as we look at the, the devastation in the video in Cookville. John Becker pointed out, you know, a, a house hardly touched, mm -hmm. a few broken windows just across the street, the home leveled. We often see that with tornadoes. We do, and you know, we like to think about it, the likelihood that it will be you that's impact, impacted is very slim, but someone will be, and so you need to prepare it in case that is your house. All right, Dr. Ellis, thank you so much. We appreciate your expertise. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for coming on.